Now I will tell you how to do the scheduling but before going further I would like to explain some of the terminologies or some of the basic concepts on which the scheduling will be happened. So I will explain a bit about that. Scheduling is a process of calculating the start and end dates of the activities. This process is carried out in two phases. Forward pass is used to calculate the end date. The process of calculating the early start and finish dates of each activity starting from the project start. Its formula is early finish is equal to early start plus duration minus one. When going backward from the finish date to the start uh, date, uh, the process of calculating the late finish and start dates of each activity starting from the project finish date. This is called backward pass. Primavera calculates the dates in two passes. One is from going to the start or from the start to the end and the from end to the start. These two process passes are called forward pass and backward pass. Formula for the backward pass is late start is equal to late finish minus duration plus one. As you know that the total float is the allowable duration of delay without affecting the project finish date. Negative or zero total float indicates timely completion of the activity is critical for the timely completion of the project. Such activities are called no uh, critical activities. Formula for calculating the total float is either long LF minus EF means late finish minus early finish or LS minus ES or late start minus early start. And free float is the allowable duration of delay in start without affecting the start of the successor activity. Such activities are called non critical activities. Formula can be derived as early start of successor activity minus early finish of predecessor activity minus one. So here comes a network diagram. Uh, suppose uh, 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 you have a list of activities you can see from here activity and its predecessor and here its estimation is given in weeks or either in the days so you have to build a network diagram based on this chart suppose this chart has been prepared and you have calculated the early start early finish late start uh, late start late finish dates according to the uh, forward pass and the backward pass and here you can see the legend that uh, uh, early start early finish late start late finish and uh, float is also called slack critical activity an activity that has a potential of delaying a project is called a critical activity such activities possess total float equal to zero and critical path a chain of critical activities that has a potential of delaying a project is called critical path it is the longest path critical path method is very important to understand it is a network analysis technique used to predict project duration by analyzing which sequence of activities has least amount of scheduling flexibility. It calculates the theoretical early start, early finish, late start, late finish of all the activities present in the schedule by using the forward pass and the backward pass. So here is uh, uh, its determination of critical path. We have to calculate the longest possible paths. There are different paths are being prepared, uh, which I have shown here. CAT, CAR, BAT, etc. So you can see that the longest duration is coming here is 16. So AC and R on critical path because they are forming the longest chain. It is coming 16 weeks. Any delay in any of the activity on the critical path will cause a delay of the whole project. To do the scheduling, which we have understood, uh, understood before, uh, it will apply from here. You can see this uh, button. This is called uh, F9 toggle key. So either you can press this one or either you can press F9. So I'm going to press F9. Here you can see a window will prompt up. Here you have a, you have to give the current project date. As we have a, pl a planned start date uh, as of first May 19. So our uh, data date will be same like this one. So I am just going to do uh, uh, press this schedule button. You can see that. Uh, 
calculation has been done and our project is uh, coming 376 duration and starting from the 1st May and it will be completing on the 16th of October 2020. So uh, now uh, on the right side you can see that the Gantt chart has been prepared as well. So uh, uh, here uh, is, there is an option of time scale. I'm going to click on the time scale by doing right uh, click and here I will go to the options of year per month. So here is a display of your critical and non-critical activities. So now your project has been scheduled and uh, it is showing uh, your uh, timeline as well. So if you want to see the summarized timeline, just do the right click and collapse all. Here is the level one in which you can see the project timeline. That is 376 days. Then coming to the next level, you can see all the timelines of all the WBS. Engineering will be completed in 186 days, procurement in 190 days, construction in 386 days. And here on the right side, you can see it's summarized can chart as well. Now going to the detail of engineering, here you can see architecture, civil equipment, every WBS has a timeline. So you can review this timeline as well. Then coming to the procurement, here, uh, here is only one WBS, but you can go to the activity level wise. Then comes to the construction, you can see also the timeline of the construction of each discipline as well. So I'm going to expand it all. So here you can see the schedule with the critical and non-critical activities. You can display the arrows of links as well. There is an option here relationship lines. If you click this one, it will appear all the relationship lines. If you want to dis uh, not, not to disclose the relationship lines, so you can turn it off by using this option. Now I will again go to the schedule option going go to the options here you can see schedule automatically if i check this button whenever i will change anything any duration any link if it it will automatically schedule at the defined data date if you go to the advanced option here there is an option to calculate the multiple floor pass all other things no need to change and here there are three options when scheduling progress activities used retain logic progress override and actual dates keep it retain logic and uh, you know that uh, total float uh, is calculated when uh, when uh, when you have a value zero equal to zero or less than zero so you can uh, change the value should you change your criteria here as well close this one now uh, whatever you have scheduled there is a log file created so I will tell you how to create that log file created in that log file you have you can get the inter in, in uh, very important information regarding your activities critical path everything you can see from here so first of all uh, click on log to file click on this button and create a schedule log file now do the schedule again and go to the schedule options again and view log here you can see the details of our project here you can see that uh, this is the project title project name scheduling has been done and very other important information regarding settings. So here you can see the project statistics. Project is one, number of activities are 53, not started activities are 53. So here is very important information you can get from here. You can see the errors or warnings. 
as per ideal conditions there should be only two activities that should be open ended that is the project start and other one is the project completion so uh, uh, i did intentionally to show you that i put one end open of this activity that is engineering piping activity so we have to link this activity as well we have to close this activity as well so that we should fulfill the uh, requirements of an ideal schedule uh, if i go to the bottom i can show you that uh, these are the critical activities 15 critical activities are on this project so all of this uh, crit uh, critical activities has been calculated by using the cpm method critical path method by using the forward path and backward path now i will rectify this activity without predecessor you can see this activity in uh, main production hall piping layout this activity has no link and it is showing from here as well that its activity is going to start on the same day and uh, uh, if i click on the relationship you can see that this activity has no predecessor so there should be some predecessor for this activity as well so we will assign the uh, correct uh, predecessor of this activity to rectify here is the <coughs> uh, activity against which we need to uh, change the successor so i am going to change the successor and putting the same activity which we have uh, or which uh, which is open end so engineering piping so i have changed the link previously i have used another activity as a successor now i have put the same active that activity which have no uh, uh, predecessor so i have linked here uh, so that all the ends can be closed so uh, if you schedule it now you can see that uh, that activity engineering piping uh, which was going to be start on the 1st may is shifted here so it means that uh, uh, now all the activities have been closed so if you want to check it again so we will go to the schedule options uh, we will view log again so here you will see the warnings so it has been changed from uh, three warnings to two this is available this will will remain because the project start cannot be linked with any activity and project completion cannot be linked with any successor so till now uh, we have uh, learned that how to do the schedule how the scheduling is done on the basis of uh, certain formulas by using the forward pass and backward pass and how we can do uh, use the option of automatically scheduling and how to view the log so that we can check the details of our schedule now i will tell you uh, that uh, how to see the critical activities in the schedule so we can go to the filter option and here uh, by default uh, critical uh, filter has been created i will apply this filter and you can see that these are the activities that are on the critical path so these are the activities that need more focus for the timely completion of the project any delay in one of these activity will cause the project to delay and if you see the total float on all of these activities it will be zero so how we can see we can simply do the right click go to the columns if you know that where is the total float go straight away to that folder if you don't know then find and type total float click find next and here is the field of total float in the duration 
I will move it to the right side. Apply. And you can see that total float is showing all of these activities as zero. And here you can see that some of the WBSs against there, there is no activity. If uh, you want to present uh, the schedule with critical activities and don't want to show this these WBS in which there is no activity, so you can go to the group and sort option and here can use high diff empty because in these WBS there is no critical activity, so we want don't want to show those WBS which has no uh, involvement in the critical activities. So I will apply. You can see that all those WBSs has been disappeared. Now you can see only those activities which are on the critical path and only those WBSs are appearing here. So you can move it here and there to see the critical path and you can see the relationship line as well. So I will if you want to go to see all the activities again just go to the filter option and select all the activities I will apply and you can see that we have seen the activities same as before it includes all the critical and non-critical activities